I met Roy Nichols in either 1988 or 1989. I met him through a mutual friend who lived across the street from me in Oildale. And Roy had just retired from the road. Uh, he had been on the road with Merle for uh, probably close to 30 years at that time. I never asked him anything about Merle. I knew he got a lot of questions about that. So I just wanted to get to know him. And it was, it was a, a lot of fun. Uh, Roy was just a very unique guy. He rode a uh, 750, it was either a Kawasaki or Suzuki motorcycle. And my friend uh, Steve, he had an extra motorcycle. It was a, a Honda CB650 Custom. So I bought that from him. And so we just started tearing up the roads out there in California. Rode to Tehachapi a good bit um, and just anywhere and everywhere. Uh, sometimes it was uh, just Roy and myself. We'd uh, ride around Bakersfield and um, wound up at uh, the Valley Plaza Mall one day to, to grab some lunch. And um, there was this clothing store and uh, this silver suit that was in the window. And Roy said, uh, that would probably look good on you. He said, I'm too old to wear anything like that. He said, it'd probably look good on you. So I had to go, I had to go get it. I bought it. And uh, Barb, my wife Barb, she, uh, later on, she hated that suit, said it was the ugliest thing she had ever seen. Roy would also tell me a lot of stories about the guys that were on the road with Merle, uh, Lewis Talley, uh, Fuzzy, uh, Tiny Moore. Uh, I didn't get to meet Tiny, but uh, he had some, some pretty, pretty cool stories about being on the road with those guys. And so uh, I got to get some of the backstory on, on the group and, uh, those guys just sounded like characters. Uh, they sounded like characters you would write for a, a movie. And it, it was really cool just to hear some of those stories. Clint Strong was an, an amazing musician, uh, especially for his age. I'm not sure if a lot of you are familiar with his background, but uh, Clint's dad uh, told him if he wanted to play guitar that he really had to learn to play guitar. And I guess his dad knew Howard Roberts and uh, Clint became a protege uh, of Howard's. And if you're not familiar with Howard, Howard uh, played on the theme to M.A.S.H., uh, the theme to the Jetsons, and Clint had a, a ton of stories uh, about playing seminars with uh, Howard, and those are really interesting. But uh, Clint, the way he put it, you know, when he should have been studying math, he had a headset on l listening to Coltrane in math class. So he was, uh, he was definitely a, a bebop player, and... Uh, I suppose that Freddie Powers um, discovered Clint or knew Clint from uh, from Texas and uh, started bringing Clint around, and uh, so that's how Clint got to know Merle and and got to know uh, Roy, and uh, there's some interesting stories there too, and uh, I guess the the first time uh, Merle offered Clint a job. Uh, Clint was giving lessons when Clint was in high school, so he, he was doing pretty well on his own. And so when Merle uh, offered him the job uh, and asked what it would take to get him on the road, it was some astronomical figure. He, Clint said, well, you know, this is the greatest country singer in, in the world, and, he, you know, this is what I should get. It was like thousands of dollars a week. 
And uh, Merle said, well, maybe we better wait and uh, until I can afford you or something to that effect. And uh, it wasn't too long after that Clint uh, went to work for Merle. So that is how I, I met Roy Nichols and that's how I, I met Clint Strong. And uh, I was still playing uh, the clubs around uh, Bakersfield and Clint would come and sit in with a lot of the bands and his playing was just astounding and people were just so knocked out. And uh, I got to know Clint really well then too. So that's how I got to know those guys. In 1990, I was playing one of the local hotel bars. Uh, I was going to school at the time and playing uh, clubs at night. So I was pretty busy. But Merle stopped in and just jumped on stage and said, uh, I want to play uh, Cold War, the song Cold War by Floyd Tillman. He said, play the nightlife intro on the front of it. And everybody's just freaked out, including myself. The guitar player was Willie Savage. I mentioned Willie in one of the earlier videos. And Willie's just standing there going, that's Merle Haggard. I said, yeah, yeah. And he wants to play Cold War. So let's kick it off with Nightlife. And so we kick off the song and, I mean, he played a, a couple more songs and it was just incredible. Um, and I found out later that's how he, he did his shows. He just jumps up and starts playing basically. And uh, Mark Yeary was there with him that evening. And uh, he asked me to go talk with Mark. And uh, so I went and introduced myself to Mark Yeary. And uh, he said uh, that they were working on the Blue Jungle album and they wanted some different bass parts on uh, that record and asked me if I would go down to uh, North Hollywood, one of the studios there to uh, record in us. I'd be happy to. And I was at the point uh, in school where it was too late to withdraw to get an incomplete. But I, I got a call a couple of weeks after that session uh, to go on the road with the band. And uh, I said, absolutely. It was Norm. Hamlet that called and he said, Merle kind of likes your playing and uh, wanted to know if you uh, wanted to go on the road. And I don't think I even asked if it paid anything. I said, yes. And uh, the first date uh, was at Bally's Casino in Reno, Nevada. I don't think it's even there anymore, but we have, uh, we got a, just a sound check to make sure the instruments uh, came on and uh, no rehearsal. Oh, uh, almost forgot to mention, this show is part of the Legends Tour. So George Jones and Conway Twitty are on the same show. And we're about to walk on stage and Gary Church, the trombone player catches me and says, hey man, he says, watch Merle at all times. He said, if he moves his leg, he does this, he's, that means he's gonna stop a song. He said, but don't count on it. Sometimes he'll stop a song right in the middle and just go into an another song. He says, watch Merle at all times, but whatever you do, and this is the part where he's messing with me, uh, the whatever you do part. He said, whatever you do, don't let him catch you looking at him. And I don't know any better. I, I'm, I just want to go and play at this point. And so I was standing next to Clint and Mark on stage. So every time Merle would look at one of those guys to give them a solo, I would look to. And I did it all night. And they have a band meeting without me after the show. And I found out what Merle said. Uh, he said, man, I like the new kid. He plays how I want him to play. He plays what I want him to play. But there, there's one thing about him. 
said, he won't look at me. And Gary said, well, here's why he won't look at you. And he had a few words for Gary at that point. But uh, that, that's, that was my initiation. And uh, they brought me in and said, well, welcome to Merle Haggard and the Strangers. And uh, it was surreal. It was unimaginable. And it, it took a, a bit of time for it to sink in what that meant. And it was most incredible. 